I had a good count going and then shit got weird. So welcome. And I never know. So it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Very on brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, so welcome to the Bar's Ankle High. I'm Katie. I'm Garrett. And today we're joined by um, our favorite guest host, Jamie from the Neurodivergent Yay! Podcast. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I'm so glad that you said yes when I asked you to do all the research on this topic. <laughs> you know, research is my favorite. I am that nerd. I cannot help it. I love medical research. I love diving into stuff and going down those types of rabbit holes. I, something's wrong with me. It's okay. <laughs> Look, I get it, but I was looking over your notes because you sent them to me last night and I was like, is this what people think when I send them legal stuff? Because... <laughs> Well, I put it in red that was easy, you know, like it was, hey, non-medical explanation. <laughs> Once I got to that part, I was mm. like, wait a minute. I think these, that's when I was like, are these your notes? Because I thought you were just sending me like a source and I was like, okay, sure, I'll read this. <laughs> <laughs> no, so today though, um, I, one of our followers on Instagram and I believe, um, I think it is actually one of our Patreon subscribers as well sent us a post from 23andMe where they were advertising that they can now do, through their testing, um, ADHD screening and genetic screening, which I think kind of opens us up to a lot of different questions. But the first question I had was, was that even possible from a spit test? Um, which, based on what I read on the 23andMe website, it's not. It's like a different type of gene sequencing that they can't do with just saliva, but that's why I needed your help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know um, saliva, as you could see in those notes, I did not look to see how they got the sources or the clusters of the genomes. Um, but, you know, 23andMe, they were saying that they use over what 157,000 or I'm sorry 15,217 genetic markers mm -hmm. and but from what I read and what I was understanding with where they are estimating the likelihood of being diagnosed with ADHD it's not that there is a specific gene or a specific sequence of genes that say, oh, this is the ADHD gene. But they found the variances through lots of research from as early as 2002, maybe, I think is how far back I went whenever I was reading up on all of this. But it's the genetic markers or mutations that show that someone is impulsive or that someone um, has issues with executive dysfunction. And with those combinations, the people who have the clusters that are high, those are the people who are more likely to have ADHD. Okay. So what are those clusters? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. It's because it's so detailed. All right. So what I have understood, scientists, they've discovered that certain changes in our DNA, um, they're called single nucleotide polymorphisms. We'll just say SNPs. Okay. Those can increase the risk of developing certain diseases. They, not just ADHD, but also things like schizophrenia, um, rheumatoid arthritis. And they're figuring out that from all of these different DNA, all of the different SNPs, that it increases the likelihood of this one thing. And we are able by doing that, that they are nine times likely, they're seeing that you are nine times likely to have ADHD due to this DNA sequence from a nuclear family member, from like a mom or a dad. And whereas in schizophrenia, there's a higher chance of getting that if your mom or dad have it. And when I mentioned rheumatoid arthritis, there's a lower chance of having it if you're getting it, even though there's a, a direct link, hereditary link. 
But I was reading that the scientists found that there are certain areas on chromosomes, um, which are like the little tiny structures that carry our DNA of two, seven, and 10 that have a higher chance of having certain genes that affect how our brain develops. And those are the genes that are really important when we're learning things like speech and learning and things like that. So I know two, seven, and 10 are specific examples. Okay. That kind of tracks with so much about ADHD though, that, I mean, diagnosis is all over the place. Like there's no real standard. Like all three of us were diagnosed in completely different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. And it's treated in different ways and people have it in ways that, oh, I'm sorry. Am I too far away? Yeah. Um, People have it in ways that represent the three of us. It represents so differently. So it's just, it just makes so much sense (laughs) that they're like, oh, well, there's not this one marker. We just kind of have to look for hints in all of these other spots. Um, But I guess, you know, if we're looking at something that's really more of like not mental health based, but, you know, a little bit less tangible than um, something like a cancer gene. Right. I think that also goes to like what we've said of, you know, ADHD being kind of a spectrum disorder rather than a single thing Mm -hmm. um, as well, because obviously there can be this confluence of 15,000 markers, but um, how they come together, you know, the, the same ingredients you use to make a loaf of bread, you can use to make a cake. It doesn't mean that they're not carbs or or you can use vinegar to clean your floors or tables and you can also use it to make ice cream right garrett yeah or or yeah. hand sanitizer hand sanitizer Depending. there's all kinds of things that have <laughs> I'm being multiple smart. uses one time you accidentally use vinegar to make ice cream or something instead of hand, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer and cake. Oh, cake. i thought it was vinegar it was well, supposed to be worse oh she thought it was supposed to be Oh, it's way worse. It yeah. was liquid hands. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you really came through because I started doing research and it was all about like the ethics of gene testing for ADHD. And I was like, oh God, this is dumb. Which is also fascinating though, because yeah. when I when I saw or when I read too that there were ethical concerns, me, I live in this world that's full of rainbows and butterflies. I don't yeah. live in a dark, cynical place. And even though I live in the world of medicine, I was thinking, what kind of ethics would this bring about? I was confused. And then as I was looking at the speculations of stigma or exposure to other people that they want their health information to stay private, right? HIPAA. But even with all that, the people may not know and that that's a way for others to find out it was like you said it it becomes really dark but that was very fascinating to me yeah it was it's one of those things and because I don't consider myself a particularly private person um and I think like for especially for medical stuff like my mom's a nurse and I kind of just figure like whatever like you're gonna know it anyway like who cares you know so it never it was never as like nothing was ever stigmatized to me growing up where it was like, Oh no, they have cancer Mm -hmm. or anything like to be ashamed of. It was just like, I went to the doctor and this is what happened. Um, so yeah, when I was looking at that, I was like, Oh, well shoot. Like that's probably potentially, I mean, I know that obviously there is a stigma against ADHD, particularly in adults, but, um, and this idea that like we should be able to manage it. Um, without help, I guess. But the idea that it would potentially prevent you from getting a job or potentially affect dating, like in very like Gattaca vibes, like um, I was like, oh, I guess that's real. <laughs> I used to work in um, insurance and it <laughs> that was, was a where conversation. I was going next. Yeah, that had, that came up a lot because, um, Especially like when I was in school and we were talking about it because that was, I mean, you figure it was a while ago. So um, (laughs) things like, you know, the genetic testing were becoming a more prevalent conversation. 
and digitize medical records. And it was, okay, so at what point are health insurance, not health insurance, are life insurance companies going to say, hey, we have this huge list of uninsurable people because, and, and the other thing is, you know, when you get denied for health insurance it, or oh my gosh, health insurance, life insurance, it goes into a database and that's information that's kept on file forever. Mm -hmm. So if you've been denied health, uh, life insurance, it comes up. It's not something that just a denied application, no big deal. It's a big deal. Like it, it gets kept forever. So there's definitely a discriminatory aspect um, when it comes to that for, for life insurance for people, which is like ADHD. I mean, there's some diagnoses that you're like, really? <laughs> Well, that but ADHD can reduce life expectancy by as much as 13 years. Mm -hmm. So that is especially significant because our lifespan, those of us with ADHD, are lower. So when you're paying life insurance, those companies aren't going to want to do that because they know that you don't have quote, you know, like as much longevity right. statistically yep. as someone else that they're covering. And it's also interesting because with different presidential, like with different people in office, they see health, health insurance, period, very differently. Prior to Obama being in, if you have a history of, let's say, heart disease, you could not get insurance. You could not get medical insurance. Uh, it's not even that you mm -hmm. just pay a higher deductible, which happens now you weren't able to get it, period. And the pendulum swings. So there's a lot of changes happening in our country, obviously. Who knows if that's going to swing back the other way? So being able to see that we have ADHD, which means that we need medication, we mm -hmm. struggle without it, many of us do. And not only that, but there are so many other things that we are learning, that the medical field is learning that people with ADHD do need that needs to be covered with insurance. So if it swings back the other way, are we going to struggle with getting coverage period? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's, it's a valid concern to have, particularly if things in certain places are heading towards, I'm going to kill this cat, are heading towards a <laughs> theocracy then it could become, you know, you don't need cognitive behavioral therapy. You need to just, you know, pray about it and, mm -hmm. um, you know, use um, theology-based remedies, quote unquote, um, to treat whatever it is that you're feeling or are struggling with. And we've talked before on a couple of our other episodes um, <clears throat> about the like puritanical just history of the country in general and the idea that if you're not accomplishing something if you're not doing the dishes if you're not folding your laundry right away it's because it's a personal failing and you're not disciplined mm -hmm. enough and the idea of being super disciplined and stoic is so like <laughs> pilgrim protestant <laughs> like waspy and not yeah. to mention i got so much hate in my comment section when I made several posts about this, but as you're saying that it's discipline based and if you're not doing the dishes, if you're not doing all that, then there's a problem with you. It, it doesn't have to do with difficulties with executive functioning, but for women in general, and we know how people, especially those groups of people that you're, you're talking about that are very traditional to be polite, that they see that this is where you are valued as a wife or as a woman, period, that you're able to keep a house clean, that you're able to keep the kids' schedule organized along with your husband's and yours, and he goes to work and make the money, and then you have to probably not only work, but you also have to keep everything perfect. That's exactly what we struggle with. So those yeah. expectations of our gender role, too, goes mm -hmm. down a deep wormhole of what it does to us with causing depression, anxiety, because internally, if that's what we were raised to believe, then we feel like we are not good enough, period. And it just exacerbates things. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would say so. And I think it's weird because I think you can speak for yourself too, Garrett, but I think that we tend to 
surround ourselves personally with people who are very like, okay, division of labor, let's just tackle this together. We'll clean out the garage together. We'll, you know, put in a new fence together. We'll do this. These things are together things. And then, you know, you kind of divvy up your jobs otherwise. But even if within your household, that's how it is, you still go out into the world and Mm -hmm. it's like, well, it's kind of hard to like make friends if you're around a whole bunch of people that are like, oh yeah, I did this. I'll actually never forget. I was doing a moot court competition in law school and we had to travel down to Liberty University, which I had never heard of. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. (laughs) That is the biggest of it. Yeah, I just never heard of it. <laughs> okay. Like we've driven past it and it is gigantic. It is a huge campus. Yeah. And we had to check in. It was like a weekend competition. I think we checked in on a Thursday evening and we checked in like at, they had this huge, they have a huge law school, but they had this huge moot courthouse and we check in and there's like a table right in front of like the primary courtroom in this building and they were having worship services in there. And I was like, that's weird for you know the separation of church and state and um one of the days during the competition we're all sitting down we're all breaking for lunch and all the different laws we were the furthest we were from the furthest north law school otherwise everybody was from the south except for one team from i think columbia law and we're sitting around eating lunch and this guy who is like 24 sits down next to other some other guy and he's like so how's the wedding planning coming and I was like not in a million years would you hear that conversation happen in upstate New York like no fucking way (laughs) would that conversation have been initiated by a guy asking you how's the wedding planning going at the age of 24 and he's already got a wedding band on in law school yes Mm -hmm. like while (laughs) you're still in school Mm -hmm. right yes so like it was just like a wild culture shock moment for me because I mean I I grew up going to Catholic church and being I think involved enough in religion but it was nothing like what you guys have down south oh yeah well (laughs) welcome to my neck of the woods (laughs) here I am with blue hair and (laughs) like a gay pride shirt on as we do this (laughs) hell yeah I'm the outcast here (laughs) Well, you can Speaking always come up to, to New York because you'll fit right in. <laughs> holy shit. I was just is like, this why I have no friends. <laughs> like, are they all up north? Is that what it is? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> north of the Mason Dixon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's pretty much that compromise is when everybody was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't but- care about your beaches that much. <laughs> We have beaches. There's just lots of rocks. Lots of rocks and the water is cold and choppy. Yes, 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 yes. But good for your, it's good for your circulatory system to have, you know, those cold baths. So what's good for me is uh, not going in it and spiking my anxiety that I'm going to drown to death. All that matters is if you can see the harbor seals. As long as you can see the harbor seals, there's no sharks nearby. That's the trick. I don't, I don't like that tip. (laughs) Um, (laughs) She said, I don't need tricks. Another trick is uh, staying on land where I am not part of the food chain. (laughs) Although I am a little bit more slow moving than usual. So I might be. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Yeah. You're, you're bait now. (laughs) Yes. And get easily winded. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, it is wild. Like the, as much it, it's ironic that there's such a national conversation, especially like every time there's a shooting, you know, the, the, um, line that's always given is like, we need to do more for mental health. Not only are we not funding it, but the stigmas that exist for people that have any kind of, like I was saying before, like a, a diagnosis that's not tangible, you know, I don't have mm-hmm. a broken leg. I don't have a mm-hmm. cancer diagnosis. Um, there is definitely this level of. It's almost dismissive, like you're supposed to know about it and you're supposed to control it, but it shouldn't impact anything. It should be invisible to other people. 
Well, so it's you can the same have thing. It. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's your own discipline failings. Right. And I do wonder too, like how much of it is, how often it is gender based. So like I have, like, for example, high blood pressure, which is like more of a tangible diagnosis that is hereditary based. I mean, dietary changes didn't do anything. Lifestyle changes, losing weight, all of these things had no impact on my blood pressure. But the conversation when I go to the doctor was always, you need to lose more weight. You need to be, and I'm like, I, I don't eat meat. <laughs> you know, I'm doing all of these things. I'm, I'm, I'm on medication that's controlling it. But there was always an element of there's personal responsibility to it, which when my spouse goes to the doctor and say, you know, his, if his cholesterol was high or something, you should just incorporate some more greens into your diet. It's not a personal failure on his part for having something, you know, having something in his blood work that was off. Whereas when I go, it was are you really eating what you're saying you're eating? Are you really exercising? So, I mean, you think about how much worse it is with a mental health diagnosis where it's, you know, I mean, how many times do we do research and it says to improve this thing, diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. That's not going to fix my anxiety. (laughs) I saw something the other day that said it was not until 1997 that they even incorporated the menstrual cycle into ADHD. Like 1997 is when we started making a connection that like, oh, females can have it. There could be influences with this, not just guys. But even when you're talking about genetics and high blood pressure, I think about black Americans. And actually, their chromosomes, um, not to go into too much detail for people who aren't, you know, great with medicine or biology, but they're shorter. So that means that their lifespan is shorter. And that comes from past trauma. And that makes you very susceptible to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, kidney struggles. And that's why in a lot of the other countries, you don't, they don't need dialysis there is a very large percentage of the people in our country that requires dialysis because of kidney disease that they can't control that. It is maybe 80, 90% of the people are black Americans, but it comes from the trauma and that is proven. But same thing, very similar to what you're talking about. Like we don't take into account the importance of the individual and what genetics, what role that it does play when it comes to treatment too, that it's not just something socially to fix. It's not something inherently that we just need to do better or be better. That Mm -hmm. it's really, it is a health problem, just like a heart attack or a stroke Mm -hmm. or things like that. And a lot of your lifestyle choices do contribute to having a heart attack or a stroke, but yet I'm still going to give you blood thinners. If you keep putting food in your mouth that had feet before. I'm not going to judge you for it. I'm still going to treat you and care about you and and hope that you get better. But I don't see that even as someone who works with a a large population of people, I don't experience that same type of love and understanding to the mental health society. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think, um, you know, it's also that, like you were saying earlier, the expectations for women to like manage the household and everybody in the household and their own life and all this other thing all these other things that can affect how we interpret our own mental health because it I think it can take so much more for us to feel or feel comfortable I guess voicing our overwhelm Mm -hmm. because there's this the it's not ankle high the bar is like for what we're allowed to complain about is like on the ceiling And we have to get to that point before we can feel justified in complaining when in reality, like we should have been complaining before we had to tread water this whole time and just pray that we can, you know, keep our head above water long enough to get a deep breath. Um, And then on the other side of things, I think men often have a hard time um, getting the appropriate mental health treatment because there is overall a huge stigma of 
um, I mean, toxic masculinity issues, plus the idea that, um, you know, (laughs) stiff upper lip and having those societal hurdles and those puritanical things around us in our society that can prevent any man um, from feeling comfortable and even asking their GP for a referral Um, and then going and let let alone the ADHD thing of getting the referral and then having to make the phone call yourself like forget it but the worst (laughs) (laughs) but right now I I got to do leg work (laughs) (laughs) right but if you think about it, if you were to close your eyes and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, or I'm going to describe someone to you, like, I want you to tell me the first picture that comes to your head of the person I'm talking about. If we start with someone who goes to therapy regularly every week, what is the picture in your head of that person? A woman. What did the person look like? A woman? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Was there a color to the woman? White. Yeah. Okay. So already we just naturally, you mm-hmm. both, you both came up with the same exact picture of someone. And we know that therapy is helpful for ADHD, for mental health, period. Right. But if you, this, this could go either way, but same thing. If you have someone who is diagnosed with, let's say schizophrenia and they do not feel comfortable disclosing that information and they still go to work and they do their best. What person did you picture with that? A man. Yeah. I pictured a white man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, we can take it even further because we know that ADHD, you do a lot with substance misuse and abuse as well. Right? So if I tell you to picture someone who is addicted to heroin, or, or if I just say a drug user, someone who is homeless, they're out on the streets, and they use drugs often. What is the picture of the person you just came up with? Well, that was a picture of a white man. <laughs> yeah, same, but like dingier looking. Um, yeah. But also... So we- <laughs> Given given the news this week, I'm also picturing Jordan Neely in New York City, who was yeah. murdered by somebody on the subway who didn't like mm-hmm. that he was homeless and struggling. So, so mm-hmm. we already have all of these inherent biases about what someone is supposed to look like. And, and again, you add the dingy to it because we do see that people who struggle with substance abuse or whatever, that they are dingy looking, right? But not really. Not really. They, we have people that I work with in the hospital and have worked with that they have diverted narcotics and stuff that they were a young white girl just like me and got fired and arrested. And I think that that is part of the problems that we have when it comes to mental health because we, we and I'm using that very broad, right, a very broad stroke, that these are the people that struggle the most. Therefore, if we struggle with seeking out the appropriate help, we struggle with doing those things because we don't fit into the box that society expects you to. Because, I mean, we don't think that is that important anyways. Like, okay, you're going to therapy, you're paying your own money, that's good. You're doing your own work. Applause. Mm-hmm. But that's about as much as our society will say that's acceptable and good for you. Because outside of that, I mean, if you put a man in that same seat, there's a feminine idea attached to therapy. And so men already will struggle with going to that because then they're going to be feminized, right? And a lot of men in this country don't want that at all. And that's going to push them away even further from getting the help that they need and deserve. Yeah. I've got people in my life, men, um, who, you know, could be going through something really stressful, really hard. And um, people unknowingly are kind of piling on at work. And I'm like, well, wait, why, like, why don't you just give them a little bit of context? Like, I'm not saying you have to necessarily open up to everybody, but you know, if I'm, if I'm dealing with something, sometimes I'll say to my boss, like, Hey, yes, I can take care of this, but just as a heads up, I've got X, Y, and Z going on. So I'm having a tough time with this this week or next week I should be a little bit more available or whatever it is just to like 
kind of give people an opportunity to be empathetic. And I think that giving them this much versus giving them this much. So I may not lead with, I have an ADHD diagnosis and life is hard. I might say like, hey, you know, I have these things going on right now and I'm just very overwhelmed. It's a tough time of year for me, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes just giving like a little bit so people have a little bit of context. Um, People can surprise you and be more understanding than you expect. But I think it's important to be having those conversations with people. So I think there's also an element of if I'm communicating this to you, my expectation is that you will be more understanding and you will maybe be more considerate of what other people are dealing with as opposed to we're at work and you got to be here for 40 hours a week and do your things and leave. Um, I think that the empathy is like a very important factor with people. Absolutely. And I wonder with genetic testing that if, for example, when I told my manager I was struggling to take a test I, that I had to take or else I was going to get fired. And I was like, oh. Teresita, I, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I was supposed to have within the first year, over two years later, <laughs> I took the test. But um, so I told my boss, I said, Teresita, I, I have ADHD. And so this has really been a struggle with me and I've been avoiding it. And she said, well, you don't look like you have ADHD. I wonder if even with this genetic testing and these markers, if it if it becomes something tangible that you can slide it because we currently are covered right under the Americans with Disability Act. But like if you can slide it towards and say, no, see, actually, these are the areas genetically that I struggle with this. I struggle with this. I mean, we can name personality traits almost with the struggle part of it and that that would because it's measurable, right? And if it's measurable, right. you can, it's, it's proof. If that would open up the door to have a little bit more, that if you provide it, a little bit more softness or cushion with the areas that we do struggle with, you know? Yeah, I think it, um, I think that's a great point because I think it, in even, you know, there's those questions of, of the ethics of genetic testing, but to the extent that it could make it more undeniable for people. Cause mm-hmm. it's not like, Oh, you know, you, you're just, you just want Adderall. You just want, you know, to take a stimulant. Like I would prefer not to, because more often than not, I can forget to take it. <laughs> like I did not with Thursday, your great alarm that you have. Time- <laughs> I spent a good amount of time at Garrett's desk on Thursday and I was like, I, don't want to work today. And then I got home and saw I hadn't taken my meds in the morning. And there we go. That explains why I just could not be bothered to sit still. <laughs> but um, it was, uh, but it is, if it, if you could point to something and say like, no, this isn't my medical record, like, and just be done with it. You know, the same way you can get a standing desk or some sort of keyboard situation if you have carpal tunnel, You don't necessarily need to have surgery to correct your carpal tunnel, but you are entitled to having those accommodations to allow you to do your job effectively. And, you know, the types of things that we need for ADHD accommodations, it's not breaking the bank for anybody. You know, it's, it's just, look, I need you to either give me a bulleted list of what you want me to do, or just give me one thing at a time, whichever way you want to do this. But like, that's what works for me. And let's go from there. So it's, it's not even, I'm not even asking them to spend money to accommodate what I need. I'm just asking for some consideration. You know, if I, I would, if I was in a wheelchair, you'd give me a handicap accessible door. Probably. Hopefully. <laughs> we were both like, mm. <laughs> um, but I wonder too, cause a lot of, a lot of women, the primary diagnosis that women get before they receive ADHD is anxiety or depression. And they find out that those medications don't do that much for the whole group of issues that they're having. And then later on, several years later, they find out, hey, I actually had ADHD. They take medication for ADHD and the world is a new place in a good way. Genetic testing, I would assume would also help with that. So women will not be misdiagnosed with anxiety, depression, and have to live more years suffering 
that it would be able to point, hey, let's actually go down this route. You, you may have anxiety and depression along with it. We're going to treat the entire group of it so that life is better for a longer amount of time. I, I see that as a huge benefit too for women specifically. Yeah. I love that you're optimistic about this because I'm always so cynical <laughs> that I'm like, this is terrible. Rainbow <laughs> butterflies is my world. See all of my... <laughs> There's just going to be so much discrimination and everything's going to be bad. So no, and computers are going to eat us. Yes. We were just having a conversation about AI this morning and I was like, it's terrible. I hate it. I don't want to know about it. Don't even tell me. Yeah. That's your approach to most things, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> Paranoid. A bit. Yeah, you are a yeah. bit. Um, there's a lot of cat hair in my life right now. So you're going to outlive both Katie and I. <laughs> We're just going to like positively go into something that's going to get us killed and Garrison be like, I told him not to. <laughs> that's, I had a I bad feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I did um, hit myself in the head with my car the other day. <laughs> uh. She's explaining it to me. I was like, you did what? How? So you, know, <laughs> you know how like... <laughs> Sometimes you're getting into your <laughs> you're getting into your car and you might like hit the top of your head on like the door jam. You ever done that? I'm five foot nothing, so no. I don't I don't know what that's like. Well <laughs> I'm also, but I have done it. <laughs> so I like I've done that before and like usually maybe like once a year. But <laughs> the other day I was like I had a tote bag. And I was putting it in my car and I was like trying to put it on the passenger seat. And I guess I just like followed my arm into the car and hit the side of my face on my fucking door. And I have an SUV. Like I was climbing up into my car and like T-boned myself. <laughs> and I hit it like so hard that I was like, ow, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I was so <laughs> mad at myself. But then I was like. I just hit myself in the head, like, <laughs> like right where my jawbone like connects. I was like, "Who does this? Who hits half their head?" <laughs> so, anyway, well, luckily my... you don't have a bruise there from it, so that's a plus. Seriously, though, but that's probably how I'll end up dying before Garrett is um... <laughs> <laughs> ramming yeah. your head with random objects. Yes, yeah. blood force trauma. They're going to investigate all of your friends and family to see who did it. <laughs> You're like, yeah. nope, it was her. It was it was, it was Katie, Katie in the driveway with her own car. Yeah. Did it herself. <laughs> yeah. We usually joke that like Katie's the kid that's like throwing herself down the hill and rolling all the way down. And I'm like very carefully taking steps so that I don't fall down the hill. That would be the the one of the differences. <laughs> <laughs> I was being careful though. <laughs> I did think about it before I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't even care. So it is good to hear like a more positive, positive take on, on the impacts of this. Cause I definitely like personally have not done anything like 23 and me because I'm then like, okay, but who is holding my medical information and my genetic information and, you know, 20 years from now, what happens with that and who's going to own it then? And I mean, I think it's great when you hear about like old cold cases getting solved because somebody's yeah. like niece or nephew did 23 and me and their creepy uncle got caught for murdering somebody 30 years ago but i do just get a little concerned with who owns it what they're going to do with it because i do worry about you know oh, okay so are we just putting together like a, a database of things i'm going to be denied for in the future because you have a sample of my genetic material because i thought it would be cool to know some things about myself <laughs> on a genetic level which I can see the concern for that now, because a lot has happened in healthcare within the last year that I would have never thought would be the case, because I was seeing progress as a nurse and, and the things that when it came to healthcare, that it was going for the better, even if the general population of people, whatever. But because Back in my days where I would have been completely positive on that, I would say, okay, well, they also tested your unborn baby for mm -hmm. genetic mutations, right? Yeah. For neural tube defects, for all of that, and nothing bad comes. They're like, okay, so now this trial, we're going to make sure that they don't get a certain kind of life because of it. 
so I can make that correlation prior to this past year. <laughs> but so now, you know, I can I completely agree with you because they're doing a lot of things to us out of our control without concern to the betterment of people in general. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um I think so I've done 23 and me. Uh, I did it at like five ish years ago now, five and a half years ago. Um my mom had gotten kits for all of us and um it's cool, but I think had I known the privacy concerns, like if I were to do it now, I probably wouldn't. Um, I would probably just do like an ancestry, follow who I know mm-hmm. back and go from there. Um, because realistically, there's not very many questions about my uh, family history. We're pretty solid on records um, going back at least – you know, maybe 140 years or so. So we have enough, like, the, beyond that, generationally speaking, that's not affecting my gene pool, really. So um, it's not, it's 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 one of those things that, like, mm, had I known then what I know now, I probably would have skipped it. It's still mm-hmm. cool to see, like, the percentages. But even then, you know, like even 23 and me it's just based on how many people they have testing from so like initially i think it said i was 74% like from ireland and the british isles and then now it's up to like 92% um which again doesn't like it was was not a surprise neither of those numbers were a shock to anybody my mom's maiden name is o'hearn and my last name is o'brien like we weren't surprised to find out that we were irish <laughs> so um but, but you know and as far as we know i mean at this point nobody's found like a long lost relative or something else like that which would have been so cool because <laughs> i'm such a gossip freak <laughs> but like other than that it's sort of like mm, somewhat <clears throat> moot um, and I think even the, um, from my personal results from 23andMe, um, it said I'm, I'm likely to have like light or red hair and I don't, I have very dark brown hair naturally. My brother has strawberry blonde hair, <laughs> but, um, so it has like a couple things where I'm like, I don't really know that where you're getting that from. And I'm wondering, even for what 23andMe is promising with their 15,000 markers, if it's the kind of thing where the efficacy of it perhaps over time will become more accurate. But right now, it's a capitalism selling point thing. They can't Mm -hmm. really do much with it because right now also... They're apparently like that test or the results of that test are only available through their like premium subscription plan. So of course. (laughs) So you'd have to pay like I think it's I think it's a monthly fee to have access to these more detailed reports and these other including the ADHD report. But in so it's the kind of thing where it's like you were saying, Garrett. Who's storing this for how long? How long are they keeping this data? And are they really accessing it anew for these new tests? Or are they just using old data, which we know from like Dateline, they do have to retest, you know, bodily fluid samples even with new technology because they can't use the results from older tests. So it just makes me wonder, I don't... I don't think that I, the male or selling information. genetic testing kits are going to be, I mean, they do have the, the thing that's like, don't rely on this for a diagnostic thing. Well, because there's not one gene that says you have ADHD. It's just, yeah. Hey, these things are contributors that people with ADHD struggle with. Therefore you're more likely to have it. So yeah, how long you definitely do you can't... think it would take for, those types of things to say, hey, I have all these different markers to be able to take that to your doctor 
in lieu of an assessment or in order to get an assessment? I have no idea how long I think it would take, but I know that I read that some of um, the scientists, they actually won awards for proving the likelihood of ADHD. So I don't see it being that far in the future of being able to use an actual sample somehow to get a diagnosis or to even maybe speed up an evaluation or assessment for ADHD, because a lot of people in the United States just to be assessed is way down the line. But if it's, it's kind of like if you go to your, your primary care provider and you say, I want a referral to a pulmonologist, a lung doctor, because I I'm having some struggle breathing. You want to go to that specialty and they can give you a referral and it's going to get you in a little bit faster than if you just call around a whole bunch of offices to talk to different pulmonologists. So, I mean, maybe that's mm-hmm. the way they can do it. But I see it being sooner than later, especially in a capitalist society that we know that ADHD, a lot of many more people are being educated about it. And therefore, they're wanting to be evaluated to see if that's something that they may have that could make their life easier because they recognize the similarities and there's just not a lot of open spots for them to be seen by a provider. So I could see that helping curve all of that and for people, the medical community make money from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Honestly, I know that in, um, not that they make money from it, I mean, but like to speed up the (laughs) diagnostic of it. Yeah. But um, I know that in uh, the UK, the NHS is like the wait list to get an assessment or to meet with a psychologist to even potentially get cleared to have an assessment later is like two or three years. Oh, we moly. It is Wild. so long. Like people on Reddit on like the different subreddits for ADHD are talking about it constantly. And they're like, well, I, you know, I'm waiting for two years. And then you kind of like, some people have even said like, okay, well, if I'm going to like, follow these ADHD hacks or whatever, these different things I can do to make myself, yeah, more effective and, and to sort of quell what I'm suffering with, with this. Then by the time I get the assessment done, is it changing the results? Because it's like, well, I don't have trouble showing up on time for an appointment because when I put it in my phone calendar, I make sure to set four different alarms on the days leading up to it. So now I don't forget. And I have all these different like stopgap provisions. So the immediate answer to do you ever miss an appointment is no. But because for the past two and a half, three years, you've been doing all these other things so that you don't have to deal with that consequence of ADHD. May I add something to those people that think that? Let's put it in a more a way that is a bit easier to understand and to make a connection with what you're saying. Because the people who think that it is very realistic and understandable, why? Because you want to be honest, right? You don't want to even feel like you're just trying to get medicated. But if you don't have a leg, if you had like your leg amputated and they say, hey, do you have struggle, uh, getting around, well, I use crutches or I use a wheelchair. So no, I don't, I don't really have trouble getting around. You still don't have a leg. So yeah, it's still an issue. It's just that you found a way to make it more manageable because you don't want to be stuck on your couch and like scooting your butt everywhere you go. That would be trouble getting around that way. But so No, if you had it prior to these provisions, people should not have to put 15 alarms on their phone for one appointment. That is not normal. People do not do that (laughs) that that don't have ADHD. It's just not a normal part of life. Personally. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I do it too. I mean, we can go through the long list in my phone for just to meet with you this morning. (laughs) I was sitting at my desk a couple weeks ago and uh, my little reminder came up for our team meeting that's like a webinar meeting and it's like in 15 minutes and I was like cool snooze to time of thing and then I start scrolling my phone and I didn't have my headphones in because I call in through my phone and I look up and I had an email from my boss the meeting was at 9 a.m and the it was 906 and he sent the email at 903 and he was like will you be joining us today (laughs) I was like 
like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, the number of times that has happened to me too. I'll have stroke meetings and I'm at home doing things and it'll pop up. It's like in 30 minutes, I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And then an hour after the thing was over, I was like, son of a bitch, I forgot. <laughs> like, oh. how did I lose it in just 30 minutes that I'm sitting at home <laughs> doing Worst nothing? Feeling. Yeah, uh, no, I totally, I was like, whoopsie daisy. I mean, not that they covered anything that I didn't already know, but... <laughs> Still, <laughs> the whole meeting was 10 minutes to begin with so I showed up six minutes late <laughs> that's bad <laughs> yeah it wasn't good <laughs> so see clearly clearly to those people your hacks does not change your ADHD <laughs> it, does, <laughs> it does not reformat it <laughs> yeah. no I had no problem getting distracted by anything else <laughs> yeah well and that's yeah. like I don't even know I have so many things that I have been doing for so long that are so ingrained in how I do things. It would be hard for me to tease out, like really until we started doing this podcast and started talking about things, I was like, oh, I guess this thing that I do, I do because I'm making it ADHD proof for myself so that Mm -hmm. I can't forget about it or overlook it or ignore it or avoid it. I have like my whole life eating hand sanitizer I have my whole life like ADHD proofed so it's impossible for me to do the things that my brain wants to immediately do with them Mm -hmm. so it is you know I one of the things that did and Jamie I don't know if this came up in your research but um in the very small amount of googling that I did um there was mention of the testing the genetic testing being especially helpful for finding the most appropriate treatment based on the markers as opposed to just like do you have it or do you not or are you likely to have it or not but more um what will work best for you yeah um whether it's stimulants uh things like that or no medication right that's more but it found through what a great question garrett that was really i threw it in there like i think towards the end of things i was looking i was like oh yeah well that's that's cool to know (laughs) <laughs> but they they are also researching that too. And they have found primarily that the way that the stimulants work and they verified it, that it doesn't take, the stimulants causes your brain not to take up as much dopamine at a time because we are dopamine seeking individuals. So there, it leaves it more in that, that like cup to pour into our brain to keep things going for more of like a longevity and stuff. And they have found that mostly that stimulants work very well and is the best thing so far to work, but they're going to continue researching on it. And they recommend that whatever your doctor recommends, obviously that that's what you stick with at this time. But they have found that stimulants have worked best with these genetic mutations of people with ADHD. Yeah. And I like thinking of it as a genetic mutation too, because Mm -hmm. I think even going into this, how many times have we been like, oh, this is a brain science thing. This is not, even though like I'm logically, yes, this is a diagnosis that I have, that I was told by a medical professional that I had, that I've been treated for in the past, that like (laughs) I have to make my life foolproof for, but still will blame myself you know, you didn't do this. You've been avoiding this because that's how you are. You avoid things or you're lazy or you are too lazy to get X, Y, and Z done. So I think like really breaking those stigmas down internally is also, Mm -hmm. I mean, on, you know, on a macro level is important for people, but also like on an internal level so that you're not beating yourself up about stuff all the, all the time. You know, every weight lifted off of me (laughs) to get diagnosed. They also found, to go more into it being a genetic mutation, but these things can also happen in utero too that changes your genetics. So you're already put together, your DNA is, you know, it's already sequenced. And But when we get down into the microbiology of it all, if your mother, while you were in utero, smoked, or... Oh my God, or to, did Pepto Bismol? <laughs> <laughs> that was number was one on the list. Say that. Forget hand sanitizer. I mean, Pepto. <laughs> yeah. um, just kidding, just kidding. But 
Like, but I mean, doing drugs, alcohol, other toxins, environmental toxins and stuff. Oh, there's too. been links with Tylenol to autism spectrum disorder too. Yeah. Tylenol so, use But not essential oils. So you got that going for you. <laughs> That's true. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> So any MLMs out there, be sure to get in touch with Katie and Garrett. Oh, we did get a message from somebody trying to tell us how to promote our young living business after our episode on that posted. Yep. You missed the point. (laughs) Tell me you didn't listen to the episode without telling me you didn't listen to the episode. Right. Yeah. (laughs) We did have a listener actually send us um, who's listening to that episode I guess is trained in natural childbirth and she sent me a a YouTube video of uh how quote how the Danes do it which was um hi Luce uh but it was this woman giving birth in like a plexiglass tub it was like a water birth so you could like see which was cool Mm -hmm. um but it was a breach birth yeah no thank you can I can I ask the opposite of that and I was like, and just like came out and I was like, that woman's pelvis is a freeway. What the fuck? Oh my yeah, God. No. <laughs> Something tells me this kid's going to need a shoehorn. Take it out. <laughs> yeah. Definitely freaking wild. I was like, holy cow. That was nuts. But um, I did confirm that they don't leave the baby underwater for an hour. So yeah. The Danes Turns got that bad. For him. <laughs> That's good. That's what Gary Young did with one of his children. And then the baby did not survive Mm -hmm. yeah it's almost like air is important at least once that placenta detaches (laughs) craziness not anyway at least he has his essential oils yeah essential oils i'm fine you know i can like (laughs) drink all the lavender oil i want (laughs) uh but i better not take tylenol or pepto-bismol or hand sanitizer (laughs) and i do wonder that too because my spouse and i both have adhd um, I think the likelihood of having a child eighty percent, eighty percent from oh, no, one go. parent. Oh, so mm-hmm. oh well, luck, there Luke. we go. So one hundred. <laughs> I mean, you don't even need blood work. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> Just like crush up the stimulants, put it in the baby's bottle from the beginning. Perfect. You were having I'm that kidding up. again. Kidding again. <laughs> that nuchal translucency test where they're yeah. you know they're they're looking for you know signs of like heart defects or Down syndrome and the <laughs> ultrasound tech is like. All right, so like the back, they're like measuring the skin on the back of the neck, like everything looks fine. I was like, oh, it's too bad you can't test that for anxiety too. <laughs> Making myself laugh, and she was like, uh huh. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> it's just because we both have really bad anxiety. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, when you left that day, they're like, let me tell you what this patient just said. Yeah. <laughs> Weird ladies in the world. <laughs> Uh, yeah no that's wild though and it makes I mean it it makes sense that you know stressor like you were saying for black Americans who have these shorter chromosomes because of basically generational trauma Mm -hmm. um so it makes sense that that would affect um how the the baby can develop even in utero and then you know cut to like our medical bias episodes and our racial medical bias episodes for how that can affect whether or not a black child is diagnosed with um, ADHD rather than a conduct disorder and all those types of things that just end up wearing you down without. And like you were saying, Garrett, like it's not a tangible thing. It's harder to put your finger on. Exactly. I I can't point to this and say, this is my broken arm from being stalked by police every time I go to the mall it you know you can't I mean well actually no you probably can show that but um but that intense stress over such a long period of time I mean how could that not impact your DNA Mm -hmm. right yeah and for you know and if you're already again you're starting at a point where your genes have had hundreds of years of trauma in this country then you're like with ADHD, you're starting at a lower gear, trying to pedal uphill and working your ass off to get there. And then people are like, why aren't you just up here? Like, aren't you lazy? Like, just try harder. Mm-hmm. So, Have you gotten up there? There was a, 
<laughs> there was this thing that I saw one time that it, it – I feel like it's there's a lot of similarities, obviously, with ADHD. But I saw it, and it was based on race. And again, I feel like this is neurotypical versus neurodivergent would be another good way to do it. But they had all of these children line up on a starting line. And this man said, hey, whoever gets to be first, you win a hundred bucks. It's right here. You get here. It belongs to you. All right. So before we start, if both of your parents are still married, take one step forward. If you, if both of your parents graduated college, take a step forward. If, you know, whatever. And so they go through all this and you could see this huge difference of where some people got started in this race to be successful in getting the $100 bill. It wasn't just athletic ability that it was based on. And right. yeah. And so what, what is the likelihood for the person who had all of these steps ahead from the starting line to be able to be successful? and to get to the finish line first. And yeah, so I mean, I, I find that very similar to ADHD. It was done based on race and things like that. Oh, absolutely. And I think that also goes for, um, in the in the ADHD realm, other learning disabilities like dyslexia mm -hmm. and dyscalculia and apraxia and all these different things that can go undiagnosed for so long, especially if you're like borderline on anything, then you autism just spectrum. Get... Exactly. If you're really like, high I know at least in the nineties, like you just wouldn't get diagnosed if you were borderline. You weren't eligible for an IEP at that point because what are we gonna do for you? You're not really dyslexic. You're not really, you know, I mean I don't even know that they were really diagnosing people with dyscalculia back then. I sure as hell should have been diagnosed with it. <laughs> but <laughs> I also think I would have done really well with Common Core math, personally. But um, yeah, so it's just one of those things where all of those different things coming together, when you have so many different learning disabilities or learning differences, then to be expected, it's that, um, I think it's an Einstein quote, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it'll live its whole life believing it's stupid mm -hmm. and it's the same thing and you know when i'm being held to the metric of somebody who doesn't have to <laughs> set several alarms and then still miss the the team meeting <laughs> then it, yeah i look like a space cadet or lazy or like i'm not taking my job seriously when i am <laughs> and i was fully prepared and i was ready to show up Right. There's just this one thing that I have a hard time with. Right. Yeah. I have, I have really yeah. bad time blindness. Really mm -hmm. bad. It turns out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so was there anything else you found in your research that we didn't get to geek out on? Um, give me half a second to take a look. I am interested to see like how different it'll be for, um, you know, our kid versus how it was, especially as a girl, how it was for me, you know, being the ultimate daydreamer as a child and <laughs> never getting diagnosed. Um, <laughs> not that I want to use her as a, as a test, but I'm almost interested to see if it's something that comes up organically versus me keeping an eye out for it. Um, you know, if it's something that teachers or daycare workers or something bring up. As like a, hey, have you considered this? Right. Well, especially since your household is ADHD designed at this point. Mm -hmm. um, like me. I mean, my mom and my brother had it. So, you know, I just existed and was perfectly happy. <laughs> yeah. I think that there's going to be a lot of positive things. I'm just speculating, but because the awareness is truly getting out there, especially for, I keep talking about like women with ADHD, but this is the, this is a group of people that I realize and recognize that are underdiagnosed and suffer for longer periods of time. It's and okay. We're I not just... in the comments on your post for this one. So <laughs> you won't get I ripped live in the comments on my post. <laughs> that is an important <laughs> distinction. <laughs> We just get bots. 
Well, you can have some of mine. I'll just send them your way. Be like, please tell the bar is ankle high your thoughts instead of me. Thank you very much. By all means. (laughs) Oh, Katie will. That's like one of her favorite pastimes. She would love it. I know. I know. I send her comments all the time like, look at this shit, Katie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. She'll text me. She'll be like, "Uh, have you seen the drama that is unfolding on one of James right now? (laughs) It's always drama. And I'm not a drama girl. That's what's so crazy about it. I can't stand drama. It but then I also can't up. keep my mouth shut. I'm like, listen here. <laughs> the one you posted recently where you were like, this is humor and blah, blah, blah. And then everybody in the comments was like, this, this is not funny. a joke. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> funny. This is why there's stigma out there. I was like, really? Because oh. nobody else leaves their keys in their front door? Mm. Also, definitely don't listen that- to the bar's ankle high because they joke about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, the comments on that post just... Oh, they just cracked me up because especially especially the one because that was the one where I had commented like, I don't know if you saw it, Garrett. It was like the third slide was something like when you like forget what you're saying in the middle of a sentence. And I was like, oh, just ask me how many times I've said to Garrett, what was I just saying? (laughs) It's that Michael Scott thing where he's like, I call it improvisation like you ever start a, a sentence and you don't know where it's going to end up yeah it's a hundred percent it happens to us all the time when we're recording too right I'll be like and you and then walk us back <laughs> you're like I we did it. this and then this and then this and then this but like i have no idea what we talked about 30 seconds yeah. prior and can't remember anything and then the comments on that post people were just like up in arms and they were like oh so now because i don't do these things i don't have adhd and i was like in what fucking world was this a diagnostic? <laughs> and it literally said, this is not medical advice. This does not mean you do or do not have it. And then people are like, well, you need to put it on the first slide that is because some people don't read the to whatever the summary of this post. Well, that's not my problem. Go get <laughs> I mean, there. get yeah. some sunshine and yeah, I'll talk put to your you phone later. down, go outside, go for a walk. Yeah. And they weren't Do just the trolls. I mean, these thing. people were genuinely very frustrated. They weren't just like trolling to troll. If you look at their accounts, like they were sincere. Oh, they were big mad. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so crazy. And then I also think I, I cannot make a post that makes 112,000 people happy. I'm sorry. It's, it's not going to happen. Every one of them's not made for you. But also, I'm allowed to be funny in what humor I find. No one else in this world may find it humorous. And if I do and I'm having a bad day and I want to put something I find funny, then I get to do that. It belongs to me. And I do it for free for you. So unless you want to start putting money where your mouth is, <laughs> then I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, totally. Unless you, if you have, if you have a purple crown after your name, I will take your advice or at least I'll think about whatever you have to offer what you prefer to see because you put money in my pocket. So yeah, that's fair. Anyway. We yeah. had a um, a review on Apple podcast. I can't, it like... makes me, I get mad literally every time I think about it. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Oh, which is hysterical because I, so I saw it and I didn't tell Garrett about it because I knew she'd get mad. I check like (laughs) once a month. I'll be like, all right, do we have any new, you know, Apple reviews? And the best And I looked and I was like, (laughs) Garrett's spouse also saw it and also did not tell her about it because he knew it would make her mad. (laughs) And he had already like Googled the username to see if he could find, it was just like, we're clearly starting out and it's new, you know, we're under a year. And it's the type of person that puts a bad review on a small business is the worst kind of person. It's but like the, the review itself was like undeserved. I was, was looking un- for a good ADHD podcast with actual practical tips, but they were just laughing too much. And about what? And I was like, well, mostly ourselves. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> We're definitely classified as like a comedy and mental health podcast, but like we do both. <laughs> laughing offends people. I have I until recently I didn't realize how angry people are at when you laugh. <laughs> Don't share the joy, guys. Just keep it bottled up. Right. Oh my right. God, I have no idea. It's very it's, much it like is. misery loves company. And I wonder if yeah. that's genetically linked. Like, can we look at chromosomes and see you are a miserable human being on this yeah. exact? Yeah. What is the sour strand of your DNA? Mean? 
<laughs> because there's a lot of people who have it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And and that's the thing where I was just like, it just like cracked me up. And I was like, okay, we'll we'll get more five star reviews eventually. People will write out more reviews for us eventually. <laughs> just so but, unnecessary. Yeah. Well, and especially Don't with like our first few episodes, they were very rough compared to yeah, that's I think, every podcast. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I was like, Great. okay, well. Mm. I mean, I guess start at the most recent ones and work your way back. So you or just like unfollow if you don't want to listen. You don't have to leave somebody a bad review. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't. Um. It didn't bother it. me that much, but it really set off Garrett. <laughs> it was like totally the. It was like a principle based thing. I was like, that is such a shitty thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Still yeah, mad about I mean, shitty like, gene. Yeah, yeah, like you don't have to write anything. Like I think right. if they had just left the two star review, which is the other thing, like it wasn't a one star review, it was a two star review. So I was like, <laughs> two. one for okay. each of you. It was one for each Maybe. of you. <laughs> yes. Good job having two hosts. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Every time somebody mentions a Google review, I'm like, <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> But we turned that into a game for Patreon, so it was fine. <laughs> we did. We did read some one-star reviews, so. We did. That was good. <laughs> There's a whole podcast about one-star reviews. I love that podcast. <laughs> you too. Me too. <laughs> That's a great Yeah, concept. it's called um, Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet, and um, it is hysterical. But yeah, no, I basically, we did that basically for a Patreon episode. We did um, one-star reviews of pet items from Chewy, and uh, there were some hot takes <laughs> some weird people out there <laughs> there really are yeah <laughs> oh boy what <laughs> oh no i'm writing because uh you gave me an idea and my my desk is a dry erase board so oh. i needed i needed my pen to write down <laughs> you're talking to two people that have dry erase boards on their desk <laughs> yeah, they're the best. my entire desk is one i love it so that's much amazing. that's awesome yeah i, I got on my fridge um, yeah, the fridge one is cool. I got one for PK too because he just got a new like actual office job. So, um, yeah, it's so like the the organism. Oh, it's so good. Love it. Like just as soon as I have a quick thought, I kept forgetting mm-hmm. to take something out of my car, and I was going into the office and forgetting it every day. So I finally like left myself a note, and then I was like, oh, I can go out on lunch mm-hmm. and get it. It was just mm-hmm. it was just so it's so freeing having that and not having to like have those things knock around or write down on a piece of paper and then I have just like more clutter. It's perfect. Yes. Well, if I write it down on a piece of paper, I generally won't look at it ever again, but I can sometimes remember it. Sometimes. <laughs> but I can sometimes remember it. <laughs> then you no longer have ADHD, Katie. We have decided I'm cured. that. Cured. <laughs> cured. Don't, don't ever go back to the psychiatrist. Done. I bet your genetic <laughs> test would be like, just write a sticky note. <laughs> jk jk is what it said jk have you tried kidding. diet and exercise um just get more <laughs> how sleep. about a little sunlight <laughs> it is like literally every single thing we research pcos like pmdd um adhd anxiety depression seasonal affective disorder they're like diet and exercise which I mean I agree with, but but also let me add, I have had ADHD my whole life, even though I was only diagnosed two years ago. I had insane struggle, which we talked about on your last mm-hmm. episode that I was a guest on. I was an ultra marathon runner. So diet and exercise did not fix right. this. <laughs> it right. didn't fix yeah. my brain. Um, right. you know, I'd run 42 miles in a race. I went 10 months without missing a day of running. I would go out at 2 a.m. Like, okay, I'm just going to go running for three hours. Did, didn't fix it. And no. my diet was pretty good too. So no. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, good job was- not getting murdered going for a run at 2 a.m. Jesus, right. you listen to true crime podcasts. <laughs> there, there was all, yeah. Um, but, but I had something that looked like brass knuckles. Obviously it wasn't because it's illegal, but it went on your hand. It's okay it if plastic. it was. I wouldn't tattle. <laughs> no one will I'm hear only, this. I'm <laughs> only, yeah. No. It's only a public podcast episode. I'd be like, oh, um, good. That's a good idea. That's safe. Yeah, brass knuckles. <laughs> no, it's even better. But it had like this little switch that you could flip and a trigger, and it was a taser. So even if a car would start slowing down while I was out running, I would turn it on, and it would be like, you know, it'd like make the sparks, and they would just keep on going. So I was very safe. 
Um, I would scare them before they Damn. even had a thought to knock me over the head and throw me over the Garrett's going to hit you up for the link to that and bring it to work. I got that's you, girl. <laughs> I think that's great. I also had runner's mace initially, but uh, yeah, when I found that taser, I'm like, this is for me. They made it just for me. Yeah. I would run like with a metal water bottle. And I'm like, I mean, if I need to, I can take it. so heavy, though. I know. I know. This and then light. I like, have something in my hands. Yeah. I Not can. ideal. Yeah. I'm, uh, this rested, and I don't, I don't run with like closed fist. Like no. my hands are always very awkwardly open. I try and have them loose, but yeah. yeah, I had, um, I used to do a bunch of running, um, and I had, I think they're called knuckle lights, but they just like went around my hand, and were like little headlights. But it was great because I didn't have to have like a closed fist or, and they were really light and they stayed there. Because the strap was like cool. silicone, so it didn't like yeah. slip all over the place. You seen those people um, that have like the vests that light up? Yeah. yeah, they're so cool. I like the ones that have the whole body light up, and then they do the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> those are great too. We should get together and do that for one of your Patreon episodes. Like, just have video of light up dances, and yeah, that would be great. Because dancing's also good for ADHD. Yeah, just yeah, in case would, you want, and then to know. we would be cured. So. <laughs> Again, the genetic and test is going to be like changed again. <laughs> we, we can we can really screw up uh, twenty three and me. <laughs> Let's just provide samples over time. There you Today go. Today I dance. <laughs> Here you go. Perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. Good job. <laughs> screw up their statistics. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> just go solve crime. God. I mean. <laughs> That's a chaotic measure I can totally get behind. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. <clears throat> um, well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, Jamie. Yeah, I was looking forward to this all month. So thanks for having me back too. on. Us too. So and it worked out because we would have had to cancel if we were supposed to do it last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's been well, I mean, it's been a time. <laughs> It so, uh, yeah, no, your schedule actually helped us out. <laughs> yeah. Great. I'm glad. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it's cool. always a dream having you here. And I'm sure we might end up having you back on when Garrett is on maternity leave. Um, Anytime. I'll be happy to always <laughs> send you my schedule because I have no life. <laughs> so Me neither. Soon it'll just be fixing up a house that I rent. <laughs> so yeah. I keep telling her, I can't wait for you guys to have those um, like mundane people living together arguments. <laughs> Something will come up and I'm like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for somebody else to have these stupid, annoying, we call them Tiffany's. Like it's not really a fight. It's like more of a tiff. So our like household nickname for it is Tiffany's. Can't wait for you to have those stupid little Tiffany's. Yeah, we're going to have one of our painting because we picked out our paint colors last weekend and um, for the living room and dining room and bathroom. And we were talking about it. <laughs> we picked out all the colors and we like get home afterwards. And Patrick was like, <clears throat> by the way, I hate painting. And I like looked at him like, what the fuck does that information mean to me? Because uh, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> that is irrelevant like in what right world now. was this not a we project like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> otherwise you don't get a, a choice in any of the colors we pick pal but um so we like i looked at him and i was like so and he was like well i just don't really want to do it and i was like so huh? <laughs> so excited so that might be i'm gonna get i'm gonna start getting voice notes from katie like and then (laughs) i can't wait we'll have a group chat with the three of us i'm so excited please (laughs) can't wait i think i still have your cell so in fact i'm sure i do so i'll just add i'll just add garrett to it (laughs) um well anyway thanks for doing all the research and deciphering it all Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Anytime. I had a great time. Thank y'all again. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was um, a good topic too. I, yeah. It was a great topic. Yeah. I was very uh, yeah. impressed with it. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for the recommendation, Sarah. And um, in the meantime, I guess, you know, go cure ADHD with spitting in a cup or something. 
sticky notes and sunshine and, and dance and exercise right <laughs> Um, if our listeners want to find you, Jamie, where can they find you? In North Carolina? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I am on any of your podcast listening platforms, the Neurodivergent Nurse Podcast. I am most active on Instagram at the Neurodivergent Nurse. And I have TikTok that I don't do a whole lot with, but occasionally some posts. I have a private ADHD chat thing on Facebook for people that, you know, other people can't see that you joined that group. They're great people there. Um, if you want to be added, just reach out to me and I'll, I'll send you a link. I also do a Patreon and Instagram paid subscribers on the Patreon. Mainly I just do ADHD tip of the days every single morning that's delivered to your email. If you sign up for that and then two extra bonus podcast episodes a month and just random stuff throughout the month too. But those are the places where you can find me the most. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks again, of course. And so um, yeah, in the meantime, sorry, Garrett, I'm just seeing your text. <laughs> Did, did Garrett say, can you please tell Jamie to shut up? Tell no. her. Are we doing Zencaster? I don't remember. <laughs> I literally sent that to her like 840. I was like starting to get my stuff together. I'm like, I'm going to get my water. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just quick text her. And I didn't. And then I checked my email and I was like, oh, yeah, Zencaster. <laughs> That's funny. So, so I also remember yeah. to be kind to yourself and um, it's okay to not uh check text messages immediately <laughs> and it's okay to laugh in case you were wondering yes. any of the listeners you are allowed to laugh yes. so. yeah because the bar is ankle high bye bye, bye. <laughs> thanks for tuning in we'll be here next thursday with another episode to tangle your ear holes in the meantime the best way to support us is to follow us on instagram at the bar is ankle high and to subscribe and leave us a five-star review on your preferred podcast streaming platform. It seems really simple, but it really is the best way to help us out, especially whenever you can actually write out a review. Great news! We have a new merch store that ships internationally and allows you to customize your merch on an endless array of products. You can head over to bit.ly slash merch to check it all out. If you want even more ankle high hot takes in your life and you have a few dollars to spare, you can also join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. There's three different tiers to choose from, $2 toe rings, $5 anklets, and $10 limbo champions. Everybody gets monthly horoscopes written by yours truly, anklets get bi-weekly dysfunction junction episodes, and Limbo Champions get all of that, plus ad-free episodes. And they get added to our close friends list on Instagram. So head on over to patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high and join today. Until next Thursday, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high. <laughs>